if you have a Soka pump, or in this case, rather old vintage pump, that when we pump it, no air at all comes out, first thing we want to remove is our cylinder cap. Take a look at the end of the plunger. Let's take a look at the end of the plunger. In this case, it's leather, as with a lot of vintage and Soka pumps. Looks quite ragged. Need to replace it. And we were able to get off eBay a replacement. In order to determine the size of the leather gasket we're going to use, we need to measure the inner diameter of the cylinder. Could use a straight edge. Looks like it comes out just under 30 millimeters. In our workshop, we'd rather use something a little more accurate. These are calipers. We'll go ahead and expand that. And we come out with a figure of 28.3. It's about 28 millimeters. We need to order something just slightly larger than the inner diameter. And the gaskets that we can order come in 30 millimeters. You might ask, how are we going to get a 30 millimeter gasket into a 28 millimeter cylinder? And that's where conditioning of the leather gasket comes in that allows the flexibility to both get in here and to seal around the edges as we pump. So we're going to use a 30 millimeter leather gasket. And we're going to need to a couple of other tools to remove the and replace the gasket. You need two 14 millimeter box wrenches. If you don't have those, you could use a couple of pliers. I like to use something made for boots to condition this and make it pliable. I like to use either mink oil or in this case, it's a product called Heavy Duty LP by Olfluffs, which is made specifically for conditioning leather boots. Or in the absence of that, you can go down to your local grocery store and just pick up some Vaseline. First thing you want to do is remove the old gasket. We'll use our box wrenches. There's be a washer inside, so we'll see if we can get off the... It's easiest when you're taking them off or putting them on to set it to pushing. Just screw it off, even though it's just a washer and a gasket. We'll remove the washer and clean that up. We'll condition the new gasket and we'll also clean this up carefully. I clean it up with either rubbing alcohol or a plain cloth. I don't like to use degreaser. Degreaser is not good for leather and we don't want it to come in contact with the leather. I use a little bit of steel wool to get off any rust and then I wiped everything down with a microfiber cloth and some rubbing alcohol. We now will go ahead and condition the leather gasket. We'll use our leather conditioner. Although again, I said we can use the other, we have other options. And we're going to work it in and rub it in to the leather. And this will take a little bit of time until the leather softens up. All right, let me work on this for a little bit here. We'll come back. Okay, this took about 20 minutes of rubbing in our boot conditioner until we can get it to almost turn inside out. 
Boot conditioner, conditioner also darkens the leather. And we're ready for reassembly. Now we took everything off and laid it down in order of the way we took it off. So this goes on first, this big washer. And then our replacement leather gasket. To get this on, don't just push it on. Work it around as though you were trying to screw it in. There we go. Time and patience always wins the day. All right. Next washer. Notice that we didn't have to wipe off the gasket itself. We'll leave that on there for lubrication. Let's get this started. Nice and firm, no Gorilla Force, and we're ready to move on. Putting in the new piston with the new gasket is a little tricky. Let's see, the size of this, uh, of the top, is just a little bigger than the cylinder, so it'll sit right. So take one edge and push that in and slowly turn it. Pushing the edges in as you go, right here. Let me move around here. Maybe I can demonstrate this a little easier. There we go. We don't want to jam this in or we'll crack or break our leather gasket. Just want to turn it and push that in. There we go. Gently, upright, push it all the way down. Screw in the top of the cylinder. And let's see how we did. Seems to pump very well. We should be able to try this out. This is a Schrader head. We'll try it out in one of our Schrader tires. All right, I have a Schrader valve in this old tire. We'll go ahead and hook it up. <clears throat> and the pumping is quite good. I should be able to get up this up to 60 PSI in no time. And the only thing remaining for me is really to check the reproducibility and compare it to some of my other pumps to make sure that the gauge is working well. Now just replacing the washer may not solve all your problems with either, either your Soka or your vintage pump but for $2.95 or so certainly worth a try it's easy quick and will work in most cases. If you have any other additions any suggestions please comment below Please subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. This is Tony of Tony 10 Speed, Safe Cycling.